park ranger sees some truly crazy things. Over the years, this series has really developed into the most popular and most demanded series I have ever created. I tell you what, there is never going to be a lack of creepy things out in the woods, and the park rangers definitely see more than anyone. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. Today, we're going to be sharing some creepy and horrifying stories from park rangers. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it's a park ranger story or something else, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp and stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. Joining me today reading story number two is my good friend, Jensen. If you enjoy his voice and haven't done so already, please be sure to check out his channel and give him a subscribe. I know you guys will enjoy his content. He uploads great content all the time that'll spook you. Anyways, before we get into this video, I do have a quick sponsor, and I would love to show just a little bit of appreciation for them. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy these creepy stories from Park Rangers that'll creep you out tonight. Hello, Swamp Folk. Did you know two out of three guys will experience some sort of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have the hair left. First of all, you can get treated from home. You used to have to go to a doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get the hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy and deliver your medication every three months so you can say goodbye to the pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Honestly, prevention is key. Keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and more than 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. Keeps treatment starts at just $10 a month. Plus, for a limited time, you can get your first month free. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash swamped to receive your first month of treatment free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash swamped. My name is Abigail, but you can call me Abby. I work for the park rangers in Arizona and I've been around this work for roughly 20 years. It was probably five years ago that I first encountered what I call the eyes. Allow me to explain. I run a night jogging group during my off hours, and we do our jog through the park every Monday through Friday night. Well, once a year we get together on the first Saturday of June, and we do a big camp out to celebrate the anniversary of our group. We were all good friends after doing this together for 10 years. Some of our elder members had passed, unfortunately, but I was a noticeably young 30 at the time of this event. Anyway, to keep things shorter, I will just give you the highlights of the event. Basically, we did our run, then set up camp, told spooky stories, and talked about our lives, relationships, and any and all gossip we knew. We all turned in rather early. It was roughly 10 p.m. when we went into our tents. I fell asleep quickly, and it was at this point that I first encountered this strange thing. I was dreaming. It was a dream so vivid though, that at the time I did not realize I was dreaming. I was out in the desert somewhere, and there was a man who was about 6'4", who looked to be a chieftain. He danced and spoke of things I had never thought about. He asked me if I wanted to know something about my future. I was going to say I did at first, but he warned me there was a price for such things. I asked him what that was. He told me something of equal value to the knowledge I would get. I told him I was willing to hear him out. He asked me once again if I was sure that is what I wanted to do. I told him yes, though I will admit I was beginning to feel very nervous. He said that I should cancel the next regularly scheduled run. I asked him why, but he said nothing. It was at this point I awoke. As I groggily sat up, I felt off. I tried to lay back down, but I just could not. 
When I went to did my business, it was shortly after doing so that I noticed something in the distance. There was a shadowy figure, and it was something I have dug the eyes. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I'll do my best. It was a black fur-covered creature that walked on all fours, very similar to a dog, but all over its body were eyes. I remember an assurance. This is what is most strange about it. I felt an assurance, but it wasn't good. It was an assurance that came with a dread I have never felt in my life. I felt sick to my stomach at that moment and almost threw up. I then looked up to be sure I was not crazy, and the eyes still stared at me. After what felt like an eternity, it walked off into the darkness, and I could no longer see it. I felt minuscule. It was at this point I felt I could move again and went back to my tent. I did not sleep the rest of the night, and I informed the ladies that I'd be canceling the Monday jog. When asked why, I just said I had plans that had come up that I needed to take care of, and that was that. Monday evening came and went, and I did not go anywhere. It was Tuesday morning when one of the ladies explained to me that her mother had a stroke, and she was able to get her to the hospital just in time to help save her life. This was strange, but what was stranger was her mother was the only person living with her besides her four-year-old daughter. Her mom usually watched her daughter for her on the nights that she went jogging. If she hadn't been home, her mom would have died and who knows if her daughter would have been okay or not. Now, my first thought that it was probably just a coincidence. Upon that thought, I looked up and saw it again. The eyes. Standing next to this many-eyed dog-like creature was the chieftain. He nodded at me, which at this point I asked my friend if she saw anything out there. I kept my eyes on the man and the dog-like creature the entire time, but my friend said she could not see anything but the beautiful horizon. I did not push the conversation any further, and eventually I let it go completely. Six months had gone by, and I was now expecting to have a child. My husband and I were going to have a baby girl. I had not seen the man or the eyes in such a long time that I had honestly forgotten all about them. The next part, I have a really hard time typing. It was a Friday and I was driving to work to pick up some things before I started my leave as I was getting too pregnant to continue my job. On the way, it started raining. It was not supposed to rain at all that day. I remember the forecast calling for clear skies all day and temperatures in the hundreds. I was almost at work when a truck swerved from the oncoming lane and headed right for me. I had no way to slow down or stop, so we hit head on. I remember feeling out of my body. It was a strange feeling. I heard voices and I was not sure what was happening. That's when I saw them. The man, the eyes, and a little girl with a glowing aura. I remember feeling that dread again when the realization hit me hard. That was my little girl. I do not know how I knew or why that was the first thought I had, but I just knew. I remember shaking and screaming. Then I saw the girl blow me a kiss and tell me she loved me before the man and the eyes walked away. I couldn't understand it. I could not understand why this happened. Eventually, I woke up in the hospital crying. It had been a week since my crash, and I knew already what the grim faces on the doctors were about. I cried every night, and quite often still do. I do not know what to say besides that I am still in shock, and it's been years. I think it's important to know that while I can't come up with a great explanation as to what these two things were or why things turned out the way they did, but I can say that my husband helped me through everything and we are still together to this day. I can also say as sad as the story is, we now have a little boy named David. He's the most precious thing in my life and I let him know all the time. If you share this story, thank you so much. Growing up in Texas, I've always been a pretty chill dude. I did my time in the military, came home, and the first thing I did was my schooling before laying my position as a park ranger. I'd always loved the outdoors, which I'm sure was no surprise at all for anyone who's ever been a park ranger, or grew up in Texas for that matter. The exception being if they were raised in the weird place that they call Austin. 
city slickers will never understand the life in the country and why it's so appealing. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life, how you want to enjoy it, be it in a city or in the country. It's just that life is a lot more peaceful in the country, most of the time. I will say in the case of this story, life was not as peaceful as I'd like it to be. You hear a lot of local legends around here, but I've never heard of any legend or tell. That would have prepared me for what happened to me in May of 2001. A big part of my job is to simply survey the area. It isn't anything wild, but you get some of the most peaceful and awe-inspiring looks at our beautiful earth and our wonderful country. It was while working on a Friday that I first encountered something that I would deem strange. I was on one of my patrols when I thought I had seen something out of the corner of my eye. It was a brief flash that was there for probably a second before fading. Now it was enough to get my attention and so I headed in the general direction of the flash. About five minutes later, I come upon the oddest thing. There is a symbol emblazoned in the grass. It's fairly large, and I don't even know how to describe it outside of saying, when looking at it, it felt immediately wrong. There was a dread that filled you when you looked at this thing. I wasn't sure how it was caused, but I figured I'd go ahead and keep a watch over the area and eventually write up a report. The next day I come back. Yes, I had to work the weekend. This is where things got a little weird. When I returned to the spot with the symbol, it wasn't there. There was no distress, nothing. Okay, I thought to myself. That's a little strange, but it wasn't the end of the world. So I put it out of my mind and went about my day. Fast forward to about three in the afternoon, and I hear screaming. I head in where I'd heard the sound from, and I arrived to find a woman, and what looked like to be maybe a seven-year-old boy freaking out. I asked, what's the problem? And the woman informs me that they saw some sort of large, black dog come through the area, and in an instant, it snatched a raccoon up, broke it open with its teeth, and vanished off into the woods. The woman seemed more unnerved that her son had witnessed it, but when asking about how big the dog was, she said it was about her height, and massive. I remember chuckling for a moment before asking the woman, how big was it really? The woman just stared at me with a dread that said that she wasn't making this up, and she wasn't amused by this question. It was then that I began to take her a bit more seriously, and made a report, and I promised to keep an eye on the area, so that's what I did. I watched the area like a hawk. I waited, watched and waited some more, until my shift was up. I never saw or heard anything. I did find a trail of blood that led off to a point, before it became too hard to follow. After a while, due to varying factors, one of which included the land itself. It started in the area the woman and her son had seen the thing in, and likely was that of a raccoon, that meant its unfortunate end to a huge dog. I put up a warning about the large dog at the office and eventually I went home. I returned to work on Monday, coffee in hand and ready to make the most of another beautiful day. It wasn't long before the day took a strange turn. As I came to work that morning, I saw something near the office. It was a dog, a black dog with teeth like that I've never seen before. It was massive and snarled at me as I walked closer to the office. I stopped and tried to hold my hands out, doing my best to calmly tell this thing that I was no threat. The thing grew quiet and quickly turned around and bolted off in the opposite direction. I took a moment to recollect myself and made sure I hadn't pissed myself before moving to the office. As I stepped closer, I noticed an awful stench. Rounding the corner the dog had been standing, I found a deer that had been torn open. I spent a good chunk of the first part of my day cleaning up the mess, and soon after, I put out a warning about this dog. I didn't want anyone running into this thing for any reason. I spent the remainder of said shift on the lookout for the thing, but I never spotted it. Fast forward a few weeks, and I got a call late one night that the police had been called to the park as a result of someone calling them. Apparently the person was scared and crying over the phone, but they went silent and by the time the police arrived they only found a torn jacket and some blood. 
I came out and had a look around, and discussed things with the officers in charge at the time. He recommended we shut the park down until further notice. I told them that likely wasn't going to happen, but I'd see what I could do. Speaking with my superiors, I was told to run a day and night shift until the thing was found and taken care of, or the sightings had stopped. I agreed. This was stupid, but it was out of my hands at the time. So I ran a day and night shift, with the help of local law enforcement as well. Mostly all I really did was have myself and a few volunteers switch to nights, along with some of the officers, and during those nights we searched for this big old dog. It didn't take long to find the thing. While searching alongside one of the off-duty officers, we heard screaming. This was subsequently followed by gunfire. We rushed towards the sounds and found a man who looked shaking, and still pointing his gun. The dog wasn't there, but there was blood. The officer spoke with the man and I rushed off after the thing. I don't know what I was thinking at the time. I wasn't even sure what to do since all I had was a knife. But eventually I found the dog laying on the ground and growling, but unable to do much on account of the bleeding. I called the officer and informed him that I'd found the dog. He said that he'd be right over there, and it wasn't more than a couple minutes before he arrived at my location. Raising his gun, he watched the dog while I held the flashlight over it. The thing didn't seem right. Its teeth were massive, and it was highly aggressive. I'm quite sure if it hadn't been incapacitated by the gunshots, it'd be after us. But for the moment, it couldn't move anywhere. We decided we'd call animal control, but as we were making the call, I turned to see this dog get up, growling once again. I swear to you, I saw this thing's wounds heal, slowly before my very eyes. I've never seen anything like it before, nor since. It barked three times before whistling was heard. I turned and looked, but I couldn't see anyone. The dog's attention was fixated on the whistling, as it rang out again. Just like that, it bolted out of sight. It moved faster than I'd ever seen any animal move in my life. It was there, and a few seconds later it vanished into the night. I'm not sure what this thing was. I'm quite sure it wasn't a normal dog. I'm still rattled and intrigued just thinking about it. We kept the night shift rolling for another couple of months, just to be safe. We never saw this dog again. Sadly, we never found the person who called 911 either. There was no trace of them, and to this day we can only assume the worst. You can call me Brent. It's obviously not my real name, but I thought I'd share a story about my experiences with a man to ram one of these parks I run in North Carolina. Now I am coming up on retirement, and this happened roughly three years ago. At our park, we regularly have issues with squatters. We constantly have to run them off in the early hours before the park officially opens. Also, we have armed security patrol at night to keep them away from any of the legitimate campers. Now, I have a bit of a soft heart, so I do not love running off people. I must though, as a lot of squatters are druggies who leave needles and other things lying around the park. There is one man though, who we like to refer to as Hobo Jim. I promise you this is not offensive, as this is what he tells us to call him. Hobo Jim is a kind soul, and he was not one of those druggies. In fact, he would often observe nature, and when we would ask him to leave, we would actually just ask him to find a bench and look like he was enjoying the park. The man was smart and had a love for nature that was pure in my opinion. I would have pretty long conversations with him on my break, and we had hit it off well anytime we'd talk. I once offered him a job, but he would always smile and say I do not need your work. There was a reassurance behind that smile to this day that still warms my heart. So one morning I come up to do, you know, my normal patrols, get things ready to be open. I'm in the station and that is when I see him, Hobo Jim smiling as big as ever. I said, how's it going? And he simply smiled some more before waving and walking off. I remember going inside the station and getting some coffee started shortly after this. All the while, thinking to myself that I should see if Hobo Jim wanted some. 
so I headed out the door and looked around but did not see him. I then shouted his name and got no response. I went back in and figured he would show up later as he usually did. It was about five minutes later that I was startled by a frantic knocking at the door. I rushed open to find a woman and a little boy who looked terrified. They explained they were attacked by a heavier set man. They then explained that I needed to call 911 and without hesitation I did. I motioned for them to come inside and relock the station. I had them explain to dispatch what happened to them. It was then I heard the conversation and realized what happened. The heavier set man had attacked the mother and her kid. He had shoved the mom to the ground before trying to beat her when he was attacked by none other than Hobo Jim himself. Hobo Jim scrapped with him before the man pulled out a gun and shot him point blank in the head. While he did kill him, Jim had managed to stab the man in the ribs before his death. This bought the mom and her child enough time to get away. The paramedics had found both men dead at the scene. This isn't where the story ends, however. A few weeks go by and suddenly, I get a visit from Jim's attorney. He informs me it was in the man's will to leave me what he had. As it turns out, Hobo Jim was not a hobo at all. He was a lonely older man who enjoyed experiencing the world around him and liked living simply. He had roughly 20 grand to his name at the time of his death and he left it to me. Now this isn't life changing money by any means, but the thought that he left it to me as a gift and the fact that my friendship with him meant that much to him that he would give me that money. Now, I took a good chunk of the money and put it back into the park itself. I'll never forget Hobo Jim or the selfless act he performed in his last moments. So wherever you are now, Jim, I hope you're smiling, my friend. I will not say my name here, but you can call me Tyler. I'm a 35-year-old woman who has been working with the park rangers for 15 years now out in Alaska. My story is going to be rather brief, as I always been rather matter-of-fact about these things. I've never been much of a rambler. Several times a year, I see something I cannot explain. It is a large humanoid figure with black eyes, pale skin, and massive, inhuman-like teeth. I see this thing off and on, usually in the winter. It is not something I like seeing, nor is it something I can fully explain. This thing is roughly 13 feet tall, but it's built like a tank. Every year, we have issues with animals being found torn in two or certain populations drastically reduced. The thing is though, I don't think one thing is solely responsible. I believe there are many of these things out there. My reasoning for this is that I've seen different variants of this thing, if you will. There is a giant behemoth looking one I see most often. There are some that seem to walk on four, possibly six legs, and there is even one that flies through the skies late at night. I do not have video, or photographic proof of this, but I mostly bring this up because I was wondering if anyone had ever seen anything like this. I'm not just talking about Alaska, I mean anywhere at all. I am at a loss for words as to what these things could be. I am firmly of the belief that they are some sort of undiscovered cryptid of some kind. From what I can tell, they never seem to bother humans as we have never had reports of people going missing or winding up dead like these animals we sometimes find. I apologize if this is not much of a story, but I just wanted to explain the strange creatures I have seen, and I just wanted to ask if anyone has seen anything like these things. My name is Robert, and I no longer work with the park rangers, as I've long since retired. I am 80 years old now. But back in my days as a park ranger in Colorado, I came across a bit of an unspoken local legend of sorts. Up in the mountains, we see all sorts of animals and other things. Well, if you go up there late at night, you may find a woman. She wears all white and constantly cries for her baby. If you go up at the right time, you will often hear it late at night. Well, well, while walking along one night, I had an encounter with this woman. Sure, as you can believe, she stood before me the same way anyone might have if it were bright as day instead of night. 
She had a glow that was eerie and beautiful in the moonlight. I was doing a bit of camping at this time. I was on vacation when this happened, and she stood there crying, weeping. I had always heard the legends, and while I believed they were possible, I never took them seriously until I saw her for myself. She cried and cried, looking for her child, but I could not help her. Cold with dread, I watched as she disappeared before my eyes, her crying slowly fading away as she did so. This is not the oddest thing I've seen up there in the mountains, though. There is also a strange group of people who wear skulls for masks that often gather up in the mountains at night. I've encountered them once and had the good sense not to be seen at the time. They were dancing in robes and seemed to wear the skulls I speak of. I'm not sure how else to put it, and I'm guessing they were some sort of cult. There have been reports of people missing in the mountains, but I am not sure if the missing has anything to do with this group or simply unfortunate circumstances, something I have not seen personally. But I have heard spoken that some have seen UFOs in the area. Strange lights and odd sounds also happen. In fact, I feel Colorado is a pretty happening place when you consider many of the things myself and other locals have witnessed here. One final thing I'd like to make a comment on personally. It is something that of all these things I've mentioned, I find the strangest and most terrifying. There are strange cries that happen in the mountains. I'm not speaking about the woman crying for her child. I'm talking actual full-on screams of terror that happen frequently near where I used to work. It usually happens randomly through the night and is almost a nightly occurrence out there. I live close enough to the park. I can hear it out in my backyard from time to time. It's not an animal. No. It's very loud and very distinct. These screams of terror have no real origin or source. They just happen out of the blue. There was a man a few years back that swore he could find the source, but after many attempts, he never did. The last time he went up there, though, he was never seen again. We searched for him, but no one ever found him. No one filed a missing person report either, as far as family and such go. So eventually, the search was dropped. I know how crazy this all sounds, but I thought I would share it with the uns anyway. I'm in no way saying that the man's disappearance had anything to do with the screams or any of that. I'm just saying, there are plenty of disturbing and creepy occurrences around these parts, and if you would like, I can share some more sometime. Thanks for listening to these creepy and downright horrifying park ranger stories. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video. I upload them every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you enjoyed my good friend Jensen's voice who read story number two, please be sure to check out his channel and give him a subscribe. You can find the link to do so in the top of the description. Much love to my sponsor today as well, Keeps. You can find all the information and a great deal at keeps.com swamped. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it's a park ranger story or something else, Please be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp, and stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you're on the go, and you want to download and bring your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories with you, you can do so on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, and just about everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. And the best part of it all? is it's absolutely free. If you want to support the swamp outside of hitting that like button and that subscribe button, be sure to check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, face masks, hoodies, coffee mugs, and all kinds of other stuff. Thank you guys as always for supporting the swamp the way you do. We're getting really close to 200,000 swamp dwelling creatures on YouTube, and that's insane. Thank you guys so much for that. 
I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.